Did Dream ruin his channel? I know that may seem like an inflammatory question designed to make you click this video, but it's no surprise that Dream's channel has not been gaining the same views and subscribers as it used to, and his channel seems to be in this weird stage of not knowing what it wants to be after the success of his Minecraft Manhunt series. Now whatever your opinion of Dream is, we should talk about why Dream's channel is slowing down. We should understand the reasons behind this, and we will look at the ways in which Dream could potentially grow his channel again. And to start but let's talk about Dream's face reveal. Because if you didn't know already, Dream has recently deleted his face reveal from YouTube, citing that he regretted the attention and the hate that he received from it. Now a lot of people like to think that it is because of Dream's face reveal that he's taken a negative hit on his channel and his overall brand image. In fact, a well-known YouTuber named SunnyV2 made a video talking exactly about that, and I can agree with some of the points that he made in his video. Dream's anonymity was a key part of his brand, and was part of the appeal behind him as a creator. By revealing his face he loses that mystery behind his appearance and diminishes one of the main pillars behind his popularity. Furthermore, his face reveal opened him up to more online harassment and no amount of effort to remove his face reveal from the internet is going to solve that. But I think we can also understand that Dream's face reveal had some obvious benefits. For this, I'd reference Colin and Samir's video titled How Dream Hacked YouTube and Broke the Internet, which goes on to talk about the many positive aspects behind Dream's face reveal. It opened up new avenues for Dream's content creation, and it allowed him to build a stronger connection with his most supportive audience. And without a doubt, this face reveal had a positive short-term impact on Dream's social media following. It led to a huge spike in views on YouTube, and it also led to his second largest spike in followers on his main Twitter account. So can we say that the face reveal ruined Dream's channel? I think there are other factors at play, and I think one of those is the lack of Minecraft Manhunt content on his channel. Dream is most notable for his Minecraft Manhunt series, having amassed hundreds of millions of views from his content. And while you may love or hate Dream, we cannot deny that this series is what pushed Dream onto the wider YouTube platform. He's not just confined to the Minecraft community anymore. However, with the last of his Minecraft Manhunt videos being posted in February of 2022, Dream is yet to find the next big thing for his channel. And in all honesty, 2023 has been a very underwhelming year for Dream content. With only three long-form Minecraft videos in six months, and none of them being as appealing as Minecraft Manhunt was, this would have a far more negative impact than the face reveal we talked about earlier. And from reading up on subreddits talking about Dream, I found one piece of information that was really interesting. On occasion, Dream has made promises to make content more consistently, but it always seems that he falls short of his promises and makes excuses in order to buy himself more time away from content creation. He announced six months ago that the lack of Minecraft content would end, and that lots of new videos were in the works, only for there to be three videos posted since that announcement. A lot of fans seem to have noticed his absence and his lack of follow through, and it has been evaporating expectations that they used to have for Dream. Our Dream Dream Team still content creators? Why is Dream posting so few videos? I'm finding it pretty hard to be a fan of Dream when he's not uploading. No matter how many times Dream tries to be relevant again, even if it's with returning to the Minecraft Manhunt series, I think a bad impression has already been made on a lot of his once supportive fanbase. It's not that people expect Dream to upload content more frequently, it's just that people want the content that they've been promised. I'll read out this one Reddit post from Old Neighborhood 607 which I think really speaks to what a lot of people feel about Dream as a content creator. We can all see that the Dream Team have been rapidly falling off. It's mostly due to the lack of content and Dream's controversies, but there's one thing that I don't understand. Why did they stop making regular content? Are they slowly retiring while doing the last money grabs such as merch, Snapchat deals, sponsors, or are they really just bad at being content creators? It is clear that they don't prioritize content anymore because the moves they're making are not the moves of someone who is trying to be successful. I feel like I've spent the last one and a half years just waiting for them to deliver on their promises and I don't have any faith that it will ever happen. I feel stupid always waiting and expecting content from someone who doesn't want to provide it. I wish they would just tell us if they still consider content content creation as something that they want to pursue. If it's not something that they want to do with their life, I'd rather just leave the fandom. Now while this may not be the reason a lot of people are leaving Dream's channel, we still have two more reasons to cover. 
And one of those is regarding that we are now in a post COVID era of content creation. Now, what does this mean? Because admittedly, the effect that the pandemic had on Minecraft as a trend is not something that Dream is in control of, but I think it is still worth mentioning. During the pandemic, YouTube achieved all time viewership on many different topics. Videos related to home office, home workout and self care all increased drastically due to lockdowns across the world. But in particular, Minecraft had seen some relative peaks in popularity during 2020 and 2021. And Microsoft was even flexing that their game had been rising in popularity due to the pandemic and people being stuck inside. Microsoft said that in April, it tallied a 25% increase in the number of new players joining its game community and a 40% spike in the number of people playing together. With a vast increase in interest, Dream couldn't have timed it better to create some of his best Minecraft content. But now that it's 2023 and the pandemic is practically over, we can see in Google Trends that Minecraft is slowing down in popularity. You see, a lot of people had their priorities shifted during the pandemic. They had more time to focus on playing Minecraft and engaging with Minecraft YouTubers. But after a prolonged period of retreating into the online world, a lot of people probably felt burnt out from following their favorite Minecraft YouTubers all the time. Once the world started to open up again, people just moved on. And honestly, this post COVID era of the Minecraft community has seen the rise of a lot of new Minecraft creators and new SMP servers that are slowly filling the platforms that Dream used to dominate. There's a lot of new competition for Dream and I think that is definitely another factor to consider. But the next reason why Dream's channel is losing popularity is to something that he has more influence over, controversy. Now I just want to say that I'm not going to talk about any controversies in specific because there are so many associated with Dream and if we go by Twitter's definition of controversy, we would be here for hours just talking about all these little instances of online drama. And there are already hundreds of videos that talk about them. It's well known that Dream is a divisive creator in the Minecraft community. Throughout his rise on the platform, he has found himself in many controversies. While some of them can be seen as damaging to Dream's brand, a lot of low level controversies actually have the effect of improving the loyalty of Dream's core audience. Let's explain this a bit further. You see, whenever an online drama occurs, there are usually two sides that form. And these sides tend to form with Dream and his audience on one side and commentary YouTubers on the other side with their respective audiences. Whatever the issue may be, it doesn't matter because on either side, the audiences will trust in what their creators are telling them. And where most of the drama and the toxicity actually happens is in the interaction between these two sides, the interaction between these two audiences, which have come to fully believe what their creators have been telling them. Lots of drama happens during these interactions, and it is not often that people accept what the other side believes in. Now, the reason why this actually benefits Dream is because if the fan base perceives that they are hated by the rest of the platform, then it strengthens the bond and loyalty within the fan base. They find solidarity in being seen negatively by the rest of the internet. This is a strategy that isn't just limited to Minecraft YouTubers or social media influencers, okay? This is a strategy that has even been used by politicians. It's used in the real world. It's a way of actually gaining people's trust and building up a loyal supporter base by making it seem like the rest of the world is out to get them. I hope you understand that. Now let's move on because on the flip side, controversies have a massive benefit for the commentary YouTubers that cover the dream related drama. It makes sense because if it has a benefit for dream, if every bit of controversy brings attention to him, it also brings lots of attention to those reporting on the drama. I would know because some of you subscribe to this channel because of my past takes on dream and his fan base because they had attacked me at one stage and I was brought into this vicious cycle and now I guess with this video I'm doing it again. But I think we should understand that it's a vicious cycle that serves to keep Dream relevant, even during the moments he is not uploading content. However, with all these benefits, okay, there is a downside to this controversial cycle. From an outside perspective, a controversial brand image can turn away anyone from becoming active supporters of his content. And for longtime Dream fans, it can be really tiring having to be part of a fan base that is subject to constant controversy. It leaves this audience exhausted and wanting to find other creators that are less controversial. I'm not trying to lean on either side in this video. The main thing I want you to learn is that constant controversy can be mentally exhausting for an audience and can hurt a channel in the long term. So we come back to the question of this video. Did Dream ruin his channel? And what could Dream do to build up his channel again? 
But we understand that Dream is just not as active as a content creator anymore. We know that his peak came during the pandemic, which was an era of increased engagement on YouTube, and we understand that controversy has had positive and negative impacts on Dream's audience. By failing to meet content expectations and having a brand that attracts controversy, we can see why Dream is declining in numbers. We can say that Dream has had an active role in his channel's decline, and we can also say that there have been many external factors that have contributed to the decline as well. But this graph doesn't actually do justice to his performance in 2023, because because Dream's peak popularity is hiding the fact that he has still been gaining millions of views each week from his content. Sure, Dream could upload more content to build up his channel again, but his channel is still performing exceptionally compared to a lot of new creators, and that is without uploading any content. Whatever you think of Dream, he still holds a lot of popularity on the YouTube platform, and in all honesty, he doesn't have a need to keep making content, even if it would address the fact that he is declining in numbers. Without a doubt, Dream has made millions of dollars from ad revenue, from merchandise, from brand deals, etc. He doesn't necessarily need to keep making content and based on the numbers that his channel seem to keep gaining, he can walk away and probably be fine with that. I think as a final takeaway for this is that channels are known to have peaks of viral popularity before returning to a sense of normality. Dream is an outlier because his peak lasted for two to three years, but now that it's over, his channel is in a new normal. He is not at his peak anymore, but he is still far more successful and far more widespread than his channel was before he blew up. So can we say that Dream ruined his channel? It really depends on how you look at it. Context is everything. But what do you think? Do you think Dream is ruining his channel? Let me know in the comments. And also, we are very, very close to 100,000 subscribers. So if you want to see more of my content, make sure to subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.